Welcome everyone, I'm King of Valence, so and thanks for watching this fun Spore video. Today, we're going to make a tier list of all 42 consequence abilities throughout Spore. This includes the 9 archetype abilities, 21 activated abilities, and the 12 passive spaceship abilities. As someone who focuses more on speedruns and challenge runs, a lot of these abilities don't get a chance to be featured, so this will be fun to showcase all of them and give them a ranking. Remember, this is just my opinion based on my own experience playing Spore. What I value most highly may not be the same for everyone, so let me know your opinions in the comments as we go through these abilities. Let's start with the archetype abilities, and likely the most well-known and overpowered ability, the Fanatical Frenzy. This ability allows us to instantly take over any rival Empire star system, converting it to our Empire for free. This includes every planet, every city, and every building in a star system are now ours. See another Empire with a purple spice planet with 10 cities? Yep, I'll be taking that. This ability is also super useful in the speedrun as well, as we can sell these newly acquired buildings. The only drawback to using the Fanatical Frenzy is that it breaks the Galactic Code, giving a large negative relationship penalty to all empires within 10 parsecs. However, only penalizing 10 parsecs is super lenient for how powerful the Fanatical Frenzy is, and breaking the Galactic Code is actually beneficial when trying to ally the Grots, who only see breaking the Galactic Code as a benefit, even when using it on their own planets. Be careful when using the Fanatical Frenzy on a Grox planet, dropping it directly on one of their cities will make them angry, seeing it as using harmful tools, so just use it anywhere else on the planet. So for Fanatical Frenzy, being able to take over another star system for free, with minimal repercussions, and benefits outlying the Grox, the Fanatical Frenzy is a clear S tier choice for me. A quick note about archetype abilities, they all have a cooldown time after their use, and some are really long, over 30 minutes in some cases. However, if we save and quit, then reload the game, the cooldown time will be removed. I will be taking glitches and exploits like this into account for this tier list to give each ability their chance to show off their fullest potential, so for the archetype abilities, their different cooldown times won't impact their rankings. Next, let's talk about Raider Rally, one of the worst abilities we'll see on this tier list. Raider Rally summons a small fleet, and I do mean small fleet, of pirates to help conquer a planet. Rival empires have a star ranking of 1 to 5, with 5 being the highest to show how developed an empire is. And this empire, for example, is only rated one star, a fairly new spacefaring empire. Let's see how well our Raider Rally pirates take over a planet with a Terra score of zero, one city, and no city defenses. Our pirates only need to destroy one city hall of 3600 health to conquer the planet. And we see this pirate group get completely destroyed by one defense ship. All three pirate groups we summoned were completely destroyed and didn't even destroy the one city. I don't see where Raider Rally can go other than F tier. Moving on to Cash Infusion, I actually really like this ability. Cash Infusion will instantly fill the Trade Route progress bar, allowing us to purchase the system. Trade Routes take 40 minutes to complete, so it's a huge time saver in early and late game space stage. Starting a Trade Route only needs plus 30 relationship in space stage, which is fairly easy to get, then using Cash Infusion, the system is already available for purchase. While we still have to purchase the city, I personally don't find making money in space stage that burdensome. And if we buy home planets, especially high value spice planets, this will make paying for future systems even easier. And Cash Infusion doesn't break the Galactic Code, and we still get to keep all the cities and buildings. I'm putting Cash Infusion in A tier. Staying with the theme of star system conquering abilities, Gravitation Wave. This ability destroys all advanced structures on a planet, including all the cities from a space empire, cities from a civilization stage planet, or tribes from a tribal stage planet. I find Gravitation Wave is more useful when trying to clear out tribal and civilization stage planets instead of needing to zap every tribe if we want a Terra Score 3 planet for ourselves. Another huge time saver. A gravitation wave is not as useful when taking over space empires, especially if there were 10 cities present. Destroying 10 cities is very powerful, but once the planet is cleared, we can only put 3 colonies on the planet, reducing the spice producing capacity of the planet, especially when compared to purchasing the system or fanatical frenzying the planet for all its cities. And gravitation wave breaks the galactic code as well. Gravitation wave feels like it helps when we're feeling lazy or really late in game when we don't feel like optimizing our planets anymore. Almost like a sandbox god mode. I'd see a planet and say, eh, I don't like this species anymore, back to the stone age with you. Boom, gravitation wave. Though clearing up tribes and civilization state cities is really useful. B tier. Summon Mini U, a much less powerful ability, creates a mini version of our ship to add to our fleet to fight with us. The Summon Mini U's health increases as we control more star systems. On normal, the Mini U starts with 300 health when we begin space stage and increases up to 1800 health. The fleet is useful in attacking planets and defending us when traveling between stars. However, the Mini U is not really a significant upgrade compared to just getting fleet ships from other allies, and the Mini U still takes up a slot from the fleet, so having this archetype ability is not really worth having over something else. 
and casual playthroughs, our peer empires do a pretty good job of staying on pace with us, so it's not like the Mini-U will always be significantly better than what we could get from others. The Mini-U only lasts 2 minutes and explodes, but can be resummoned right away since the cooldown also only lasts 2 minutes. In case anyone's wondering, removing the cooldown doesn't allow us to summon multiple Mini-Us. The first one will explode when we load back in. The best benefit of the Mini-U is there's no penalty for the Mini-U getting destroyed. When a fleet ship from another empire is destroyed, that will give a relationship penalty for not protecting our spaceships. But the maximum health of the Mini-U at 1800 health isn't even as high as an allied Gronk ship at 2400 health points. Summon Mini-U gets d -tier. If it didn't take up a fleet slot and was significantly more powerful than what we could get from other empires, it could have ranked higher. Next, Static Cling immobilizes all enemy ships and turrets on a planet for 3 minutes. This could be really helpful to take over a planet without getting shot down or give us a chance to use friendly tools when allying the Grox. But for conquering a planet, we still have to put in all the work. But shooting fish in a barrel is still more useful than those pirates. Static Cling's a little boring and there are easier and faster ways to capture a planet. C tier. At least Static Cling pauses all defenses when we're fighting them, unlike Soothing Song, the actual worst archetype ability on this list. This ability temporarily sets the relationship of all other empires that have a negative relationship with us to zero, immediately stopping war with all empires. This ability is pretty powerful for reaching everyone in the galaxy, however this effect only lasts for 2 minutes, and the effect will end immediately once we fire on an empire. So I guess we can get one free move to conquer a planet before all the defenses are back online, or travel through a large area of warring empires. However, the soothing song does not work on the Grox, they'll still stay at war. Interesting how the relationship bonus gives enough positive relationship from the Soothing Song to balance out the relationship penalties, but the Soothing Song bonus isn't actually applied on the Grox. If Soothing Song had worked on the Grox for an easy trip to the Galactic Core, this could have made this ability worth using, but now it gets the bottom of F tier. Finally, the last two are more utility focused. Return Ticket is surprisingly useful, especially late game when we want to travel across the galaxy to the very tip of a spiral arm and uh oh, an eco disaster on my purple spice planet? I'll be right there! Return Ticket really takes the stress out of venturing too far and makes traveling around the galaxy far more convenient. Return Ticket I also see as a late game sandbox ability when we're just traveling around and want to return back home quickly. It's like being able to return home in Minecraft instantly. And since I'm including glitches in this list, Return Ticket has the ability to make our ship completely invincible by combining the Ghost Ship glitch with the Galactic Core cutscene, and I'll leave a link in the description where I explain this trick in more detail. Return Ticket gets top of A tier. Last archetype ability, Safari Vacuum, scoops up two of each species on the planet and places them in our cargo hold. This is very useful for early game to gather plants and animals so we can fill out the planet's food web and place buildings in our colonies. I also appreciate that Safari Vacuum collects them in a reasonable order and aren't just randomly placed in our cargo. Safari Vacuum is also useful in the specific mission where we have to gather samples from a planet. Usually these are time missions too, so having Safari Vacuum collect everything quickly is nice to have. But other than a tiny bit of convenience, it's really only useful in specific circumstances and only really speeds up a process that isn't too difficult to do manually. I'm giving Safari Vacuum D tier. Those are the archetype abilities, but now we can move on to the activated abilities that take place from creature stage to civilization stage. We'll go through all of the stages' abilities one at a time, starting with the Siren Song. Not to be confused with Soothing Song, Siren Song in Creature Stage is much more powerful. Siren Song allows us to socialize with angry creatures and boosts our socializing skills when allying other creatures and rogues. This is especially useful on hard difficulty since aggressive creatures will all be angry, not allowing us to ally them. However, Siren Song unlocks the ability to ally and recruit strong aggressive creatures to fight with us that isn't normally available without having this ability. Siren Song can be used offensively or defensively to subdue aggressive creatures to fight them one at a time or escape, as the effect lasts for 30 seconds with a 5 minute cooldown. Siren Song is very powerful for casual and challenge runs, but we don't have a lot of offensive capabilities. I give Siren Song S tier under Fanatical Frenzy. These creature through Civilization stage abilities all have cooldown times as well, but can't be removed like the archetype abilities, so the cooldown times may play a role in their ranking. Summon Flock during Creature Stage is also very powerful, summoning a group of 3 to 5 creatures to assist us in either socializing or fighting. The creatures it can summon appear to follow the NPC level 1 combat role from the archetypes page on Spore's website. This means the summon creatures can have up to level 3 parts as long as the creature also has wings. Knowing this, we can summon custom creatures on purpose by following these requirements. Best case scenario, we can have 5 extra creatures all with level 3 stats. Even without the maximum potential, summon flock is still very useful for lasting 2 minutes on a 6 minute cooldown, allowing us to progress through significant portions of creature stage using this ability, A tier. 
Lastly for Creature Stage, Raging Roar scares nearby creatures which can save us from being attacked or allow us to attack them one at a time. This is basically just a subset of Siren Song's abilities, which could do that as well, but Raging Roar doesn't do much else. It can really get us out of a jam, but mostly good in the moment and only lasts 25 seconds. Worst of the Creature Stage abilities, but see tune. Moving on to Tribal Stage, Refreshing Storm replenishes all the fruit taken from nearby flora around the Chieftain. I've never really ran into a time where I've run out of fruit and wish it came back. There's a lot of plants to collect fruit from on the continent, and there are many other more efficient ways to collect food in Travel Stage if we've been here for this long, including fishing, eggs, and even stealing is surprisingly effective. And restoring fruit only helps herbivores and omnivores, and we still have to retrieve the fruit, leaving nothing for carnivores. Refreshing Storm gets F tier. Running out of available fruit has never been a concern in my time playing. Flying Fish, however, is slightly more useful. Flying Fish works for both herbivores and carnivores, splashing up seaweed if our creature is an herbivore. The food is gathered all in one place anywhere along the coast, and if our tribe is right on the coastline, we can have it delivered right to our food pile. No need to go around collecting fruit from a large area. Flying fish provide around 35 food points, which is super useful for very early in tribal stage. And the animation with the sea monster doing a cannonball splashing the fish onto the shore is kind of funny. C tier. Traps allow our chieftain to instantly kill a group of unsuspecting creatures for easy beat collection. Similar limitations to Refreshing Storm, except this only works for carnivores and omnivores, this time leaving herbivores out. Typically, three or four creatures can be caught in the traps, and this has to be wherever the creatures are, which may also take some time collecting. Traps would have also been given F tier if it wasn't for the trap's ability to kill epics. Taking down an epic for free and providing around 150 meat by itself raises it to low C tier. Fireworks in Tribal Stage is definitely my most used ability in this stage. Fireworks bring any relationship with a rival tribe to blue friendly no matter how low the relationship was before. The effect is not permanent, but fireworks save not only 10 food points in giving them gifts, but it also saves us needing to do one of the performances, making the tribe ready to ally. In an aggressive run, this can also delay when another tribe will attack us. Fireworks are a solid A tier. Super useful when every tribe is angry and only want to attack us. Beastmaster allows our chieftain to recruit nearby animals to either fight or socialize with our tribe members. However, the advantage of having other creatures is fairly minimal. The only time I've ever used Beastmaster was in the pitiful worm runs, as the extra creatures were the only way to fill the performance meter on hard difficulty without using any tribal equipment. Other than this specific circumstance, using tribal equipment from the tribal outfitter is more powerful than this ability. Beastmaster gets D tier because of its use without tribal equipment. If no equipment was possible to beat Tribal Stage on its own, Beastmaster would have received F tier. Firebomb, saving the worst for last in Tribal Stage, lets our Chieftain throw tiny bombs in a small range, dealing 15 damage to nearby rival members and buildings while knocking the tribe members over, giving us a short advantage while fighting another tribe. 15 damage is pretty weak when rival members have at least 100 health, and knocking the other members prone doesn't last that long. Firebombs only help when attacking and doesn't do anything for social playthroughs. Firebombs get F tier. Looking at this list, most of the tribal abilities are in the bottom half of this list, probably also contributing to why most people don't remember tribal stage very fondly. Moving on to civilization stage, we have Healing Aura, which restores the health of our buildings and vehicles wherever we send it. Note for these civilization stage abilities, I'm using the Unlock Super Weapons cheat for these demonstrations. These abilities normally do have cooldowns and may have other requirements to use them, but each Healing Aura restores anywhere from about 150 to 300 health at a time. This can be really useful for offense when our vehicles are attacking a city when we see a majority of them are getting weak. Using Healing Aura can also allow us to keep the attack going and keep us from needing to spend more money in buying new vehicles. This is especially useful when fighting religious cities as their vehicles all do area of effect damage. Healing Aura does not heal other nations' buildings or vehicles, but for some reason does heal their turrets. Healing Aura and all Civilization Stage abilities cost money, however these first three abilities including Healing Aura only cost 2,000 spore bucks to deploy. So if we can save a large group of vehicles from getting destroyed, that can really be cost effective instead of needing to buy a whole new fleet of vehicles. However, economic buildings and vehicles don't benefit too much from Healing Aura since they shouldn't be taking damage on the battlefield, but Healing Aura still gets B tier. Static Bomb, similar to Static Cling, temporarily neutralizes all enemy vehicles and turrets for 15 seconds within range. Great for offense or defense, neutralizing enemy defenses as well as an attacking fleet, allowing us to put in a considerable amount of damage before they can fight back. Of course, the larger fleet hit, the more effective the ability, but this can really get us out of a losing situation, or help us attack with a weaker force, and can help as economic delaying an attack. B tier as well for Static Bomb. Something funny with the Static Bomb is if we hit creatures with it, they will get angry with our city and actually march into the city limits and stand angrily at our town hall. 
invulnerability, incredibly powerful, especially for an early game on hard difficulty. Temporarily makes our vehicles and buildings invincible for 20 seconds. This is mostly useful for offensive attacks as military and religious, but can help as economic for defense. Still very powerful, and recharges only after only one minute, so we can use it a lot. Goes in A tier. The effect lasts longer than Static Bomb, and our tanks being invincible is more effective than a one-time healing. Using Diplo Dervish on another nation will set their relationship to friendly plus 30 towards our nation, no matter what the relationship was before, for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This can put a war on pause and give us the time to recover from a much more powerful nation trying to attack us. This can also be useful when playing economic, if another nation is at war, they will never accept a trade route. But Diplo Dervish makes them friendly, so they will have to accept a trade route for the minute and a half. And if we can manage to fill the trading progress bar during that time, we'll be able to buy the city even after the effect is over. Diplo Dervish is fairly strong, but enemy vehicles and turrets do fight back if we attack them, so we don't get to attack without resistance. Top of C tier. Next for Civilization stage is the Bribe Bomb, a funny ability that will make all enemy vehicles turn on each other and fight themselves. For 20 seconds, their vehicles are doing damage to each other, as we can also fight them dealing even more damage. More likely used for defense, but this could also be used for offense if they happen to be clumped together at one of their cities. The effectiveness of the Bribe Bomb also depends on how many vehicles are caught in the range. Better than the Static Bomb, as it lasts a little longer and does additional damage instead of just sitting there taking our damage. Bribe Bomb is top of B tier. Mighty Bomb deals a massive 600 damage to all buildings, turrets, and vehicles in range. Buildings have 800 health, so a shot targeting right in the center of a city will bring an entire city's buildings down to 200 health. Mighty Bomb only needs 3 minutes to recharge, which is faster than the buildings can heal back above 600 health. So two Mighty Bombs can take out an entire large city's 11 buildings for 8,000 spore bucks in 3 minutes. The turrets are just out of range in large cities, but we can't hit everything in small cities. And destroying buildings from the Mighty Bomb counts towards the capture bar. This could allow a small fleet to move up and finish the city much easier. Mighty Bomb can also take over Spice Geysers. No need to freeze or bribe other vehicles attacking us, just remove them from the game. And if we hit a large group of enemy vehicles at a time, Mighty Bomb is potentially a much better use of 4,000 spore bucks at a time than attacking with vehicles. A tier for Mighty Bomb. Black Cloud neutralizes all buildings and turrets on a target city. This massively benefits religious and military attacks on the city. Black Cloud lasts for two minutes, a fairly long time to get our fleet organized and should be enough for a religious capture. However, economic doesn't see much benefit and we still have to put in a lot of the work to actually capture the city as religious or military. And for 16,000 spore bucks, that money is much better spent on vehicles. Black Cloud and the next two abilities need four cities under our control to unlock, and by then we'll have plenty of space for a large fleet. It might even be cheaper to capture a city without this ability, but may make capturing significantly easier if we were doing some kind of pitiful vehicles run. I give Black Cloud low C. Sending an ad blitz, otherwise known as watching YouTube, on a city will instantly make a trade route progress bar full, making the city available for purchase. An ad blitz will work on any rival city, including a city without a trade route already present, and will work on a warring nation. This is very powerful and can help economic playthroughs buy cities when the remaining nations are at war. And military and religious playthroughs can also buy the city as well if they use this ability. The city does still need to be purchased in order to capture it, but there's no rush since the trade route progress doesn't get reduced over time. A city will also always accept a bid of 16,000 spore bucks. Along with the ad blitz, any city can be instantly taken over for 32,000 spore bucks, and we can keep all the buildings and turrets making up for some of the cost. With the city able to be purchased, we have the option to increase our relationship with that nation if needed by giving a more generous bid for that city as well. This option wouldn't have been possible through a strictly military or religious playthrough. Ad blitz gets A tier above cash infusion, since ad blitz doesn't require a trade route to have already been present. The Gadget Bomb, a single nuclear bomb when fired on a city will instantly capture it, and will also one-shot epics. The Gadget Bomb, like the last two abilities, only costs 16,000 spore bucks to deploy, making the Gadget Bomb a cheap method to fully capture a city using an ability. However, there are huge drawbacks to using it. Other nations will give a negative 90 relationship penalty for using nuclear weapons, so wars everywhere. And some of the building slots in the city will be radioactive piles that can't be removed and could make the city difficult to develop in. But the Gadget Bomb is a very powerful and cheap way to progress through Civilization stage and only requires a 5 minute cooldown to deploy another. Gadget Bomb gets A tier under Ad Blitz, due to destroying the buildings and making some of the city unusable for the rest of Civilization stage. Ad Blitz may cost more to capture, but keeping the buildings and turrets intact pays us back for the larger investment. Which leads us into the final three Civilization stage abilities. We'll discuss these three, the Fanatical Uprising, Global Merger, and ICBM all at the same time. These three abilities are all similar to each other and incredibly overpowered. 
They each allow us to complete Civilization Stage for 48,000 Spore Bucks once we control 6 cities, capturing the remaining 4 cities for an insignificant 12,000 Spore Bucks each. Meaning we only need to capture 5 cities ourselves, then Spore basically gives us an instant win button for extremely cheap. The Fanatical Uprising specifically is the key to speedrunning Civilization Stage on hard difficulty. And in fact, they're so powerful I begin to not use them in specific challenge runs because of how much Civilization Stage it skips. Economic really benefits from the global merger, as this allows us to still win Civilization Stage without needing to work or ally with everyone on the planet. There could be a warring nation controlling all four remaining cities that would never trade with us, but we can still win anyway. Fanatical Uprising, Global Merger, and the ICBM all make it to S tier. Global Merger and Fanatical Uprising work the exact same, but Global Merger goes higher because of the better victory song. Then Fanatical Uprising followed by the ICBM, because it destroys all the buildings and leaves radioactive piles in their place. The radioactive piles do get removed in Space Stage pretty quickly, but it will also cost Space Stage money to replace the buildings. These abilities do go under Fanatical Frenzy and Siren Song because those abilities are used more throughout their stages, whereas these three Civilization Stage abilities are locked until reaching six cities and are only able to be used once. And finally, we have the passive Spaceship abilities for Space Stage. These abilities seem to either be really good or really bad without a lot in the middle. Let's start with another group of abilities because these four all do something similar, each giving a 20% discount to a specific category. The Social Suave, Gentle Generalist, Colony Craze, and Arms Dealer each give a 20% discount to Social Tools, Standard Equipment, Colonization Tools, and Combat Tools respectively. However, they only give discounts when buying from our own Empire and not Alien Empires, which makes all these abilities complete trash. Other empires are always more discounted than 20%. However, the gameplay balance is our empire will always sell everything that we have unlocked, whereas the other empires only have a small selection based on their archetype. But what is available to buy from these other empires can be up to 50% off. Unless we are doing some challenge run where we can never contact another empire, it's always better to know what your neighbors are selling and buy it from them instead. Each of these abilities get F tier, but for their placements, we'll rank by what discounts are most effective. So F tier, but first is Colony Craze, since Colony Tools are the most expensive and most recurring buys. Social Swab next, also for having a lot of recurring buys, but not as expensive. Followed by Arms Dealer, which has more one-time weapon purchases, but a big discount on Planet Busters. Then Gentle Generalist. This is for stuff like Interstellar Drop upgrades, which are pretty expensive, but all only bought once. I think Gentle Generalist should have been a discount for terraforming tools instead. Powermonger, back to some good abilities, increases the size of our energy reserves by 50%. The game describes this ability as increasing the effectiveness of weapons, which I think they meant Power Monger makes weapons more efficient, but that still isn't the case. For example, the most basic energy storage without Power Monger can make 20 jumps before running out of fuel. Refueling costs 7,000 Spore Bucks from this empire, or 350 Spore Bucks per jump. But with Power Monger active, we can reach 30 jumps before running out of fuel, costing 10,500 Spore Bucks to refuel, which means they are still charging us 350 Spore Bucks per jump, but putting more fuel into our reserves. This is still very useful, especially since this will last for our entire space game. Powermonger goes in A tier for this increased capacity. Pleasing performance reduces the likelihood of revolt for our colonies. Just like in Civilization Stage, if we make our cities unhappy and full of factories, our overworked colonists will protest. The colony is treated as if it's under attack and we can't contact the colony until it's fixed. In my experience, this event appears to be fairly rare, because I've had speedruns where we make the colonies full of factories and never had a revolt. I even thought I heard that colony revolts were cut from the game and they wouldn't strike anymore. But speeding up the game with Cheat Engine for long enough, eventually an unhappy colony did strike. For this case, pleasing performance may be more useful in early space stage, as we can work our citizens more without worry of strikes. But the happiness and loyalty booster colony tools also appear to reduce the chance of revolts as well. So the impact of pleasing performance is reduced in late space stage as we can afford all the colony tools. Pleasing performance gets D tier, revolts happen too rarely, and the colony tools fill the role. It would have been a lot cooler if, while the colony was striking, a conquer bar would appear and would slowly progress until the cities were fixed, and if the progress bar was filled, they would become their own empire. Next we have Speed Demon. This is one of the best spaceship abilities, making our ship travel faster between stars. This is also one of those nice-to-haves you might not notice after playing for a while with it, but really notice when it's gone. Spending hours and hours in long casual space saves, this ability is a must-have. This ability makes our travel time take two-thirds the normal travel time. So if it takes 9 seconds to travel, now it should only take 6 seconds, making us 50% faster. Incredibly strong and goes into S tier. In this example, being able to travel straight to the center of the galaxy without needing to worry about energy at normal speed takes about a minute and 50 seconds, but with speed demon only took a minute and 20 seconds. Prime Specimen gives us a 50% health increase to our spaceship. 
This can be more or less useful depending on our playstyle, but especially dependent on the difficulty. On easy we start with 1500 health, but only 300 health on hard. So any extra health we can get on hard will be really valuable. By the time we get to the maximum health on easy and normal, we likely won't be dying since we'll have an incredible amount of health that's hard to lose. But there isn't a consequence for dying, and we keep our inventory and nothing gets lost. These spaceship abilities are all conveniences, but this one isn't as powerful. B tier. Not getting shot down by the Groks while I'm trying to enter the Galactic Core with only 451 health has saved me in the past though. However, the level of convenience is much higher with the Gracious Greeter Superpower. This ability gives a plus 10 relationship bonus when we contact another Empire. Along with introducing ourselves for another plus 10 relationship, this will keep all normal empires from staying at war and make everyone else much easier to ally, without needing to do extra missions and other work for them. And this plus 10 bonus even works on the Grox Empire. Very important for allying the Grox as every relationship point is crucial and this ability works for free. Grace's Greeter works on every empire encountered and I think is really useful. S tier, under Speed Demon. Greenkeeper is great for early game, but wanes in usefulness into the late space games. Greenkeeper reduces the rate of bio disasters for our colonies, where we have to eliminate five creatures to avert an ecological collapse. It sounds like this should get more useful as space continues, since we'll have more and more colonies and need to clean more planets. However, just like with pleasing performance, the Biostabilizer is another colony tool that fills the role of the Greenkeeper. I've had saves with fairly large empires, and with the Biostabilizer on each planet, I really didn't notice the bio disasters becoming a big issue. I'm not sure what the exact chance the bio disasters are reduced by, or if the Greenkeeper and the bio stabilizers reductions are stacked. It's hard to tell if both of them working together would make a significant difference, I can really only go by past experience for this one. Perhaps if we plan to colonize and terraform every planet in the galaxy, then Greenkeeper could be more useful. Detour. Spy Savant, the reason everyone tries to finish Civilization Stage is economic. This ability gives a 50% spice production increase to all our colonies. Without the production bonus and not caring about our colony's working conditions, we can have each colony producing 180 spice per hour. But with Spice Savant, each colony can produce 270 spice per hour. However, interestingly, Spice Savant doesn't appear to work in the latest version of Spore. With Spice Savant in the history, when watching the planet in the star system view, the spice was never generated any faster than the base rates. To double check, I tried the same test on the oldest version of Spore, and Spice Savant was working properly. I found some other differences between the versions as well, but those would be best for its own video. But for now, when Spice Savant does work, the increased production saves a lot of time generating spice, especially early game. Spice Savant gets A tier. Pirate Begone, just like the pleasing performance and the Greenkeeper, is mostly replaced by a colony tool. Pirate Begone reduces the chance of pirate raids, however the Uber turret completely removes the threat of pirates. The uber turret is fairly expensive but totally worth it and only needs one per colonized planet. With an uber turret and fully defended colonies, they can even repel grox attacks. What are pirates going to do that the grox can't? When I see any message about pirate attacks, I completely ignore it because most of the time the conflict is resolved before I even arrive. At least if there's a bio disaster, I'm required to intervene in the case of the greenkeeper. Pirate Begun I think could be more useful than the discounts in very early game, especially on hard difficulty, but still an F tier. And that's my tier list for all 42 consequence abilities throughout Spore. I'm pretty happy with where everything landed from my own general experience and to my own criteria. I had a lot of fun making this tier list, and let me know what you think of this ranking, and feel free to comment what you would change in your own tier list. Thank you so much for watching, I'm King of Valence, and I'll see you next time.